When Oprah was born, she didn't know where she will be today. So you could be that in Limpopo, in South Africa. Special greetings to the Executive Mayor of Waterbeck. We thank you for the support and being here with us tonight. And I'm sure as you listen to us, you will communicate our messages to this province and what BMF is all about, our wishes and our desires. Tobela Sipati. Acting MD Musi, thanks for all the support and all people from National including the chair of North West Province. Northwest. This is at the heart and the root of our culture as Africans. We can't throw it away. It's only when you travel and experience other cultures that you realize how much we're giving up may executive may. So these are the messages that I'll be communicating to you. Democracy brought a lot to us in this country, but I'm sure what it never did was to say, throw away the good values and the culture that we all know and have as Africans. When you travel the world, the one thing that the world know about is how beautiful we sing and dance as Africans. So, Muso brothers, you have that. But I want to meet you as I travel in Nigeria, <coughs> in Nairobi, <laughs> in Ethiopia, in the UK, in the state. You Amen. shouldn't limit yourself to the talent that you have. It's long overdue that we make our own names as South Africans and as Africans. No one is going to do it for us. So today I commit you to discipline and sustainability. <laughs> In the next three years, I want to see the same energy and same path, uh, passion that you have tonight. We don't want to read on the papers about you and the bad things. I say this as a mother and as a leader in this country and from the bottom of my heart. The only way we must have is way forward. Yeah. Allow me, ladies and gentlemen, to pay tribute to the late I would not include a person, an individual who lived the spirit of BMF in many ways and touched all of us in one way or the other. He spoke to BMF Gauteng early this year and set in the tone for us as we came in as a presidency, Bonang and I, and took us through the path of BMF, why it was formed in 1976. I know it's coincidental that many things happened in this country in 1976. But it's because he was experiencing the hardness of being in corporate South Africa then. But he was taking us through what he think hasn't changed yet in this country. And having been developed, grew up in the private sector myself, I couldn't agree with him more. One of the things that he shared with us was that, as a country, we haven't as yet dealt properly with racism. So those who attended our corporate update dinner, 
early in June, we remember that we pledged against racism in this country. And I commit you today to join us in that pledge, because unless and until we do that, we're not moving as a country. Apologies on behalf of our president, Ndate Monang Mahale, who would have loved to celebrate with us, but sends his apologies. Tonight, I stand here a very proud Deputy President of BMF, thanks to both the National Board and the BMF in Limpopo to have allowed us to launch something close to our hearts and to my heart in particular, a BMF gender desk. And why did I do this, ladies and gentlemen? The journey I traveled so far wasn't an easy journey. It was a lonely journey. You were the first and the only in most cases. I don't want to continue to be the first and the only. I want many women to be in the same journey that I traveled. And hopefully, in this gender desk, we'll achieve that. The gender desk, desk is something that I hope will change the face, feel, and look of corporate South Africa representation and demographics. As I stand here, August month in South Africa, dedicated by the government of the day to celebrate women. I appreciate the efforts made by some corporates and public sector may executive mayor, so you'll pardon me tonight, in allowing women to take up positions of power, including yourself, of course. Because you will know that this was also a difficult journey in politics. Until women strong in politics, politics said enough is enough. What about us in private sector? However, one is equally worried that the progress made is of serious concern and worry. As women representation in decision making jobs and the trend is not convincing. I addressed women in public sector a week back and they asked me many questions about why they think it doesn't work in being a women leader. And I said to them, when you are a leader, you are a leader. There's nothing called a woman leader. Mm -hmm. When you lead, you lead. Because when you are good, you are good. Thank you. So don't follow trends that say it's a woman leader. Because it's as if, again, women don't deserve to be leaders. We are all born equal. We happen to be born in a society that was more towards the main part because they set the tone and the trend because of tradition, custom, and culture. But if I was born with John the same day, I'm not referring to you, Dr. Mdaw, I just happened to choose the name. But if I was born the same day with Dr. Mdaw, raised the same way, by right we must all be doctors today. But even our own parents, at times, followed the path that their own mothers will have said to a girl child, you look so pretty, my girl. I want you to be married by Hoshi's cuckoo. <laughs> so the only thing that was in the girl's mind as she grew up, guess what was that? Her beauty. Dr. Mdao, you are so talented. I want you to be a doctor. And the only thing that Dr. Mdao did was exactly to be a doctor. I say this because as women, we still repeat this trend of raising a boy and a girl child differently. The efforts of this gender desk will not realize if a woman only sees herself is that one who's going to be married by this executive and be given a MasterCard. We all are born with our brains and have the capability to utilize those brains better. Thank you. Although statistics indicate that we have more men, sorry, more women than men in the country, Representation of women in shaping, and you must listen to the words that I chose. Representation of women in shaping and influencing how organizations are run and managed 
tell a different story. We could debate and provide many reasons for this to continue and live to accept this misnomer of underutilizing our women talent and potential. We as the organization stand for the development and empowerment of managerial leadership skills, in particular amongst blacks. We will have failed our mandate if we do not take the responsibility of playing our socioeconomic role of supporting our own women and hence the introduction of the gender desk. Because we could talk about transformation, we could talk about developing managerial leadership, but if the majority in this country are not given their rightful positions in the boardrooms, we are not necessarily fully discussing and addressing the issue. So this desk will help us to play our meaningful role as BMF, and also our women, uh, BMF women to be help and shape differently through our coaching, mentoring, and developing their art and science of being an equal player in the boardroom, art and science. Because you don't just walk in the boardroom, you have to be ready. And that readiness doesn't include pulling a handkerchief. I've even seen men working with a handkerchief in the boardroom. So even a woman doesn't have to work with a tissue in the boardroom. Because it doesn't matter how hot it is going to be with a meeting. But when you have learned the art and skill of leadership, so in the past, when you follow literature, it says being a leader was about getting A's and B's as grades at school. Then later on, as I walked into the boardrooms myself, I was told it's about our, our, your EQ, your emotional intelligence. But today, Harvard studies say no. It's about the mood of the leader of the day. We know that. But when a mother is unhappy in the morning, everyone else in the home is unhappy. Right? Imagine women setting the mood and the tone in corporate South Africa. Because women in their very nature are competitive. I've never met a woman who doesn't want to look beautiful. All of you went all out tonight to impress, hopefully, first yourself. Don't do this for another person. Do it for yourself. Find your niche and specialize in that niche. We were born and raised in a society that said, with this shape and figure, you could make it in many things. The reality is, it's not true. When you are good, you are good. It's not your shape, and everything else that is going to take you through the journey. Statistics conducted and studies done indicates that of the 10 fastest growing economies in the world, about seven are from Africa. Potential investors in Africa state one of the concerns as being lack of skills. I debate this differently to say the lack of skills as being seen might be structural, structural issues as most of the decision makers still who still recruit, train, and promote are in the majority main. And this can't continue as it drops the continent of great women. But of course we've demonstrated that. Because the chair today of AU is our very own Dr. Ngosa Zangasuma. No. I had the honor of listening to her as we kicked in the August month in Pretoria. And as she ascends the stage, as she talks, Everything about Dr. Nkosa Zanazuma is quality. Mm -hmm. And she took us through the journey of the vision 2063. And reminded us that some years back in this continent, there are countries which took the lead in economy compared to day of your South Korea, etc. But something went wrong. But that something went wrong but these are not her ways, they are my ways. Something went wrong at the time. Who were the decision makers then? I'm born and bred in Skukuni. 
When I grew up, I was like, I'm going to go to the school. I was like, I'm going to go to the school. I was like, she was felt. So I argue differently when people say, women don't have what it takes to lead. Because when you are good, you are good. Ladies and gentlemen, in the execution of the EMF gender desk, these are some of the things that we are going to be doing. We are going to dialogue better on the gender issues at the board level, at provincial level, and hopefully at branch level. The agenda of the day has to change. It can't continue the way it is. So, when I was in one country in Europe, a lady who was born in Russia, currently based in Germany, I asked her nicely, her name is Joanna. You know, I like the names because it's one of Regina or Regina or Regina in Europe. <laughs> so I asked her, Joanna, what is it that we are eating? And she goes, Coco, I do not know. I don't cook. And I said, there we go. I'm not the only one. <laughs> I say this because some women feel bad that cooking is not their passion. Because at the end of the day, we were born and raised in a society that said, when I joke, I know I start a coco, reappear in one act. How unfair. <laughs> we can't continue, ladies and gentlemen. We robbed the Joannas of this world the art and skill of demonstrating and helping us shape this world better and differently. That's what we are going to do in the DNA Genesis. We are going to improve on our mentoring and coaching program to up the skills and knowledge of our women. But what I want, what I want and is a big ask of our women today to do differently are the following. To focus their conversations differently. And I'm going to just pick up one example. You can discuss microwaves. <laughs> but now I bought this one. We only mom and bought that other one. The reality is none of you innovated that microwave. <laughs> what you could do is to innovate and say, but even the sun can be a microwave. We could save energy in this manner. That's what we want our BMF women to look at. I want our BMF women to relook their current structures. And this, as I mentioned today, such as societies, and make them sustainable structures in such a way that the total allocation of what the society invests in is not only to bury and to pay for funeral, but it must be able to say 30% funeral, 40% education trust, 30% a cooperative that will help us sustain this society and our own communities. We can't continue talking that the only thing and the only time this is going to end is when we bury someone. It's not sustainable. My mother couldn't have done this in the 70s, in the 80s, in the 90s. Then Naga 2013 can't be. 